Welcome to The Complete Works, an official podcast of Filmbook. The Complete Works is a podcast that delves film by film into the filmography of a Hollywood actor, director, writer, or composer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Complete Works. I'm your host, Doug Hess. If you're tuning into The Complete Works for the first time, what I do on this podcast is discuss a specific movie from a film actor, actress, director, or composer's film career. I'm currently working my way through the Christopher Nolan uh, film career, and on this episode of The Complete Works, I will be discussing the movie The Dark Knight Rises. Find more on The Complete Works podcast at film-book.com. That's, again, film-book.com by using the search term The Complete Works. You can also email us at podcast at film-book.com with The Complete Works or The Dark Knight Rises in the subject line. If you like what you hear on this podcast, please hit the subscription button so every time a new episode has been released, it'll be downloaded to wherever you listen to your device at. So as we do each and every week, we're going to be looking at a little bit of trivia. We're going to also look at some box office stats, cast members, and then also give you a review of the movie and give you my take on what I thought of the movie uh, about the movie. So let's go ahead and jump right in, talking about Christopher Nolan and the Dark Knight Rises. So uh, we'll start off about a year before the movie's release, the writer, producer, and director Christopher Nolan mentioned he was considering using a mixture of CGI and deleted scenes from The Dark Knight of 2008 to have the Joker appear briefly. He ultimately decided it was disrespectful then to Heath Ledger. According to Gary Oldman, Christopher Nolan took the actors and actresses uh, the ending of the movie verbally to avoid any leaks. So he told him that. Uh, Christopher Nolan said that this movie theme deals with pain. For Batman Begins in 2005, it was fear, while The Dark Knight in 2008 dealt with chaos. Um, Tom Hardy, standing at five feet nine inches, had to wear three-inch lifts to make his character Bane appear as tall or taller than co-star Christian Bale, Morgan F- uh, Freeman, and Sir uh, Michael Caine. Around the one hour and twenty minute, according to the producer, the line "That's a lovely, lovely voice" was improvised by Tom Hardy while doing promotional interviews for the movie. Tom Hardy stated that the most difficult parts of the movie to shoot were the fight scenes, not because of the uh, physical aspect of it, but because he was such a huge Batman fan growing up that he felt it was uh, like he was beating up a childhood hero. However, he also said that despite the worship of the character, the moment Christopher Nolan yelled, action, Hardy uh, started throwing punches as hard as he could. Tom Hardy accepted the role of Bane without reading the script. He was verbally told that this would have unprecedented access to extensive stunt training and equipment that he could enjoy knocking around. Around the 55-minute mark, uh, when uh, Kyle disappears from a rooftop, Batman remarks, So that's what uh, that feels like is lifted directly from the DC graphic novel Kingdom Come. Even the circumstance is similar, except it was Superman. At the 15-minute mark, when Bruce Wayne uh, traces the fake fingerprints that Catwoman was wearing when she cracked a safe, the result was a uh, Nokai or or Dico. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, and I know I am. This is the same name that was used by the Joker to author the fake uh, obituary from the mayor in the Dark Knight. Right? Excuse me, in the Dark Knight, in 2008. Tom Hardy has several large tattoos on his chest and arms that had to be covered up using heavy cake makeup for this movie. To prepare for her role as Catwoman, Anne Hathaway worked out five days a week on a regiment that involved. A vigorous exercise, stunt training, and dancing. She called it the most physical, demanding role to date in her career. Anne Hathaway also said that she was uh, desperately coveted the role of Catwoman and was completely a nervous wreck after her audition. The first time her agent phoned after the screen test, she said she had good news and asked if uh, Hathaway was sitting down. Hathaway immediately screamed, I'm Catwoman, and ran around the room in a frenzy. Unfortunately, her a- uh, agent had to calm her down. He had to, uh, he had called to let her know that she had been invited to host the Academy Awards. 
Hathaway said she was so shocked that she went numb at the offer. Fortunately, shortly after, her agent phoned again to let her know that she had been offered the part as Catwoman as well. To prepare for the role as Bane, Tom Hardy gained 30 pounds and studied various fighting styles. Out of respect to Heath Ledger, the Joker is never mentioned in this film. Christopher Nolan wanted Marion uh, Hartroad so much for the role of uh, Marion uh, Tate that he uh, modified the filming schedule to accommodate her pregnancy. When Nolan invited her to the movie in 2010, she told him that she was pregnant and didn't know if she would be able to do it, but Nolan decided to keep her in the movie. Uh, they started filming just one month after she gave birth, and Nolan also made room on the set for her family in the last months of filming. Uh, she also shot another movie at the same, same time in France called Rust and Bone in 2012. She was flying back and forth between the U.S. and France to shoot both movies. During the interview in Vogue in August of 2012, Nolan marveled at her ability to do to do the job as soon as after giving birth, calling it amazing to see and describing her as superwoman. Around the one hour and 55 minute mark, when Jonathan Crane first appears as the sentencing judge, he is wearing a heavy tatted coat that looks like uh, it has straw coming out of the shoulders. This was a clear nod to his alter ego, the Scarecrow. According to Christopher Nolan, Bane was chosen as the movie's main um, Arch enemies uh, to test Batman mental as well as physical. Two major characteristics for Bane of the comic strip series. Bane's theme is a chant which uh, features the term Disha Basha, which is Moroccan for the word rise. That is out there. And um, Anne Hathaway has revealed during her audition that she thought she was an uh, auditioning for the Joker on Off Again, Girlfriend, Partner in Crime, Harley Quinn. It was only after she was discussing with Christopher Nolan that she found out she was actually auditioning for Catwoman. The nickname Catwoman is never spoken in the movie. Rather, newspaper articles and police files refer to her as the cat. This is in keeping with the original incarceration of the character, not yet named, who was a a uh, jewel thief and was known only as the cat before becoming the cat woman. However, various official merchandise and marketing uh, material referred to her as cat woman when she was wearing the, her mask costume. Furthermore, the shooting scripts referred to as Kyle as cat woman when in costume. Kristen Bale uh, is the first actor to portray Batman slash Bruce Wayne in three live action movies. This record was later beaten by Ben Affleck, who played the role in four films. This is the first Batman movie by Christopher Nolan that did not get an Academy Award nomination, and the third Batman movie after Batman Mask of the uh, Phantom in 1993 and Batman and Robin in 97, which did not receive a single nomination either. As a close look on the handle, a walkie-talkies used by the Gotham City Police reveals an old DC comic logo. In this movie, there is a total of six Oscar winners, Kristen Bell, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, Gary Oldman, uh, Marianne uh, Caudrill, and Anne Hathaway, and three Oscar nominees, Tom Conkton, Liam uh, Neeson, and Tom Hardy. Additionally, Academy Award nominee uh, Maggie Heithner Hall appeared in Arch uh, footage, bringing the total of the ten, unprecedented in a... Uh, comic book movie. According to costume, cost, uh, costume excuse me, designer Linda Hemming, she took two years to design Bane coat. It was inspired by a Swedish, Swedish arm, army jacket and a, re, a French Revolution frock coat to make Bane look equally dicta dictatorial and revolutionary. Each movie of the Dark Knight trilogy is 12 minutes longer than the previous one. Batman Begins in 2005 is 2 hours and 25 minutes, and Batman, excuse me, The Dark Knight 2008 is 2 hours and 32 minutes, and this movie is 2 hours and 44 minutes in length. According to Tom Hardy, his, uh, he based his voice for Bane on uh, Bartley Gorman, uh, 1994 through 2002, an Irish 
Traveler, who was undefeated bare knuckles boxing champion in the UK. Uh, at one point, it is rumored that the Penguin was to have uh, been featured as one of the movie's major villains and would have been played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. However, Christopher Nolan quickly denied the rumor, saying that the character would have been difficult to adapt to the, this version of Batman. Uh, during Bane's first encounter with Batman, Bane's foot steps on the steel granite on the sidewalk produce loud, heavy thugs, while Batman's footprints make little sounds at all. This was done on, by sound effects team to further contrast Bane versus Batman's style of combat. Kristen Bale uh, surprised locals by casually dropping into Admiral Rodney Pub in Walton, Norningham, while filming the exteriors to Wayne Manor at Walton Hall. The plane used uh, in this movie by the CIA operatives to transport Dr. Pell crashed almost a year after this movie was released. The aircraft, an Amber EMB-110, uh, registered ZS dash NVP crashed on June the 29th, 2013 in Bosnia. The pilot and co-pilot died in the crash. Tom Hardy described Bane as an absolute terrorist. He's brutal, but he's incredibly, incredibly clinical in the fact that he has a result base and oriented fighting style. This style is heavy handed, heavy footed. It's nasty. It's not about fighting. It's about carnage. End quote. Uh, in the football stadium sequel, the cast and extras were all wearing heavy winter coats through the scenes, which were shot during a massive heat wave across the East Coast during the summer of 2011. Around the 45-minute mark during the motorcycle chase scene, Bane is wearing a red helmet with black visors as well as a brown motorcycle jacket. This is the original costume Jason Todd took under his red hood, persona, which is a callback to the Joker's original criminal identity. At the two-hour and 44-minute uh, long mark, this is the longest Batman movie released to date, as well as the second longest movie that Christopher Nolan has directed. Interstellar in 2014 is his longest uh, at two hours and 49 minutes. His first draft of the script ran at approximately 400 pages. Um, <clears throat> at the 27-minute mark, when an Officer Blake talks about a giant alligators being in the sewer lines, this may be an intentional nod towards Batman villain Killer Croc, who Bane out-wrestled to become head of the Gotham gangland. As with the previous two movies, Bruce Wayne's main car is a Lamborghini. Batman begins in 2005. Lamborghini in the Dark Knight had a Lamborghini in it as well. This movie... Um, also has a Lamborghini. Uh, Christian Bale personally dyed part of his hair to make Bruce Wayne look somewhat older. In the designing of the Batwing production, designer Chris, excuse me, Nathan Crawley approached it as if it was an actual military project, emphasizing the need for it to fit in the same family as the Tumblr and the Bad Pod. He incorporated design from the military craft, including the uh, Harrier, Jump Jet, Bell Boeing B-22 Osprey, and the Boeing uh, AH-64 Apache. Uh, Cillian Murphy holds the record for the most frequent appearing Batman villain. He played Dr. Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Uh, the Scarecrow, in all three movies in the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, during production in uh, Pittsburgh, a local man was arrested for attempting to steal an unmarked police car. He said he was an actor and that his crime was actually a scene in the movie. A local newspaper ran a headline in the a story in the headline, like Batman, car thief story does not fly. Anne Hathaway, who played Catwoman, has been cast as Black Cat in the Amazing Spider-Man uh, film in 2012, which at that time was under Sam Raimi's direction as Spider-Man 4, and was going to feature the Vulture and the Black Cat. Christopher Nolan used a heavy mask uh, muffet throughout the movie. Batman, Bane, and Catwoman all wear masks. Bruce Wayne has a collection of African tribal masks in, his, in the room where he and the Officer Blake first walk into Blaine Manor, and the Moradian uh, Tate hosts a masquerade party. 
Uh, Christopher Nolan offered James Newton Howard the opportunity to write and score with Hans Zimmer, as he did for Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, but Howard felt that the uh, that due to the collaboration between Nolan and Zimmer on Inception, he would be like a third wheel. This is the only Batman movie in the uh, trilogy and in history where the final battle takes place at dawn. Uh, they always, almost always take place during the game. Um, <clears throat> around 10,000 extras were used to shoot the Gotham uh, scene at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Some of the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Steelers players uh, played football. Uh, Heinz Ward, Ben, ben Rothenberger, uh, Mike Wallace, uh, Heath Miller, Aaron Smith, Ryan Clark, to name a few. Former Steelers coach uh, Bill Cowher, Cowher appeared as the coach. Pittsburgh Mayor Luke uh, played a kicker, and Thomas Tall, CEO of this of this movie's production company. Legendary Pictures is part owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Christopher Nolan is the first director to complete the full trilogy of Batman movies, but the second to direct a full trilogy of movies of one superhero after Sam Raham completed the Superman movies. At around the 47-minute mark after Bane's team robs the stock exchange, the chase scene contains a shot of the table, which is counted down from 91 seconds at 47 40. At the end of the scene, it reads 49.10. The ch uh, chase sequence lasts exactly 90 seconds. And we see, uh, according to producer Emily Thomas, Emma Tom Thomas, the filmmakers el elected to shoot this film in Pittsburgh to emphasize Gotham's size and scope, and because they literally shot every inch in Chicago where the previous two movies had been shot. Tom Hardy is the second actor to play Bane in the uh, Batman film franchise. The role was previously played by Jeep uh, Swinson in Batman and Robin in, two, uh, excuse me, in 1997. Tickets for the movie premiere midnight IMAX screening in New York sold out six months in advance. And in order to make the Batwing fly, uh, it has various support by wires suspended from cranes and helicopters and mounted on a uh, purpose built vehicle with hydraulic controls to simulate the different move, moves. Um, this is Christopher Nolan's first movie since Insomnia, just not to receive an Academy Award nomination. And then um, we see that uh, Robin Williams was rumored to play uh, the role of Huge Strange. Composer uh, Hans Zimmer collected one-line recordings of Channings to incorporate into the score. And in addition to writing and producing and directing Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan, this movie shares several of the main cast with Inception. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom Harding, uh, Sylvian Murphy, Marion uh, Cottrell, and Michael Caine appear in both movies, and as Christopher and Jonathan, Jonathan Nolan's cousin, uh, Meriden, in a cameo that's out there. And so, um, see here, we have, um, it was filmed in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, under the title Mascus Rex. During the football sequence shown in the trailer, a player is seen wearing a jersey with the last name of uh, Ravenstock on it. This is Luke Ravenstock, the mayor of Pittsburgh, where portions of the movie were shot. He was Washington Jefferson's college starting place kick on the football team for three years and was team captain his senior year. He holds the school record for the most uh, consecutive extra points. Thomas uh, Lennon, played a similar role as, as a doctor in Christopher Nolan's uh, Memento back in uh, 2000. At two hours and 40 minutes, this is the second longest Superman, excuse me, superhero movie made to date, although there are longer superhero movies like Watchmen 2009 and Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice in 2016. Their longer versions weren't shot in theaters. 
Avengers Endgame 2019 is now the longest at three hours and one minute, being a uh, uh, in a theater uh, to be released. It's in a Saturday Night Live 1975 sketch, Anne Hathaway appeared as Kate Holmes, uh, talking to a talk show about her role in Batman Begins, the first movie in this trilogy. Um, just a lot of good information that we have here. And so, I'll give you a few, little bit more when it comes to um, some trivia here. That I hopefully that you're finding interesting. After appearing in this movie, uh, Marion and Gary Ullman appeared in Dave Bowie's music video the next day. Bowie appeared in Christopher Nolan's movie, uh, The Prestige, back in 2006. Uh, at around the nine-minute mark, when referring to Bruce Wayne as a shut-in, uh, Daggett says, we all know he's up there with his eight-inch nails and mason jars full of urine. This is a reference to uh, billionaire Howard Hughes. Christopher Nolan was at one point attached to a director Howard Hughes biopic. This and other live-action Batman movies to feature Bane as a villain, Batman and Robin, back in 1997, show Batman logo during the opening scenes sequence, freezing and then cracking. Um, in 2017, during the inaugural speech, President Donald Trump quoted part of Bane's uh, Black Gate prison speech. He quoted the line, To you, the people. This caused much amusement as several people compared to his political agenda for the United States as that to Baines of Gotham. The football stadium scene was filmed, like we said, at Heinz Field of the Steelers. The Steelers team colors are black and yellow, same as Gotham's uh, team. The fans were also seen uh, twirling yellow rally towels, a nod to the real-life terrible tech. Terrible Towels, made famous by the Steelers and their longtime announcer. As of 2012, the movie is the seventh Batman movie where the budget uh, was more expensive than the previous movie. Uh, the complete list is this, estimated in dollars. Batman the movie, 1966, uh, did $1.3 million. Batman and 89 did about 35 million. Batman Returns in 92, 80 million. Batman Forever back in 95 did about 100 million. Batman and Robin 1997, 125 million. Batman Begins in 2005 did 150 million. The Dark Knight of 2008 did about 185 million. And The Dark Knight Rises of 2012 did about a quarter of a million. Dollars. Um, let's see here. Uh, the vest that Bain wears is a Diamondback Tactical FAPC2 vest. Brent Cully would later play Thomas Wayne in Joker back in 2019. Uh, around the eight minute mark, when Commissioner Gordon is giving a speech about Har Harvey Dent, there are two actual portraits of Harvey Dent behind him. Um, but turned it down to work on The Relevant in 2015. This is the only second Batman movie not to include the word Batman in the actual title. Uh huh. And see here. Uh, this movie is one of, of two post-1989 post Batman movies in which um, a, the Akram Asylum is not mentioned, the other being Batman Returns back in 2000, excuse me, 1992. Uh, before appearing in this movie together, Christian Bale and Joseph uh, Gordon-Levitt uh, had a lot in common with each other. They played Jim Hawkins, Bale in Treasure Island back in 1990, and Gordon-Levitt in Treasure Planet 2002. They did two Disney movies. And the, their first Disney movie were live action, and their second were animated. They appeared in Christopher Nolan's movie prior to this one. Bale uh, did Batman Begins in 2005 and The Prestige in 2006. And The Dark Knight 2008, where Gordon Levitt appeared in Inception in 2010. In 2019, Christian Bale re revealed that some sometime after the third film was released, Warren Brothers approached him to make a fourth film. Although he said he would be delighted, he would only accept it if Christopher 
Nolan was involved as director. Obviously, Nolan rejected the offer, and the project then was not continued. The motorcycle chase starts off in New York City, as evident by the real New York Stock Exchange to the right of the fake stock exchange and ends uh, near the Bonavent Hotel in Los Angeles. Uh, Can't even talk tonight, guys. Uh, civilian Murphy and Tom Hardy appeared in Peaky Blinders in 2013. In 20, on 2020, uh, Sir uh, Michael Caine, played Alfred, stated that the Dark Knight trilogy was one of the best experiences of his life and some of the best he has ever worked on. Uh, Matthew uh, Moden appeared in Full Metal Jacket uh, in 1987 as Private Joker. The second Batman movie uh, to gross over a billion dollars, The Dark Knight, in 2008. In 2008, excuse me. Uh, The last movie that Christian Bale played Bruce Wayne, Batman, the next actor was Ben Affleck and Zack Snyder's Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, in 2016. Around the one hour and 35 minute mark, William uh, Devon, made a short appearance as the president. He played President James Heller on 24, Live Another Day. Whereas The Dark Knight had 28 minutes of IMAX footage, The Dark Knight Rises has over an hour's worth. This is the third highest grossing film of 2012. This was featured on the 2018 list of 100 greatest films of all time by the film critic Robbie Collin. Uh, the Telegraph, Robbie has constantly named it Number one on his list of best superhero films of all time, which has been updated yearly. Uh, when uh, Devan played the president on Stargate uh, SG-1 back in 1997. Uh, Dr. Crane, also known as the Scarecrow, is the only villain to appear, like we said, in all three of the Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogies. Um, just a couple more here. Um, uniforms by the Gotham City football team was made by Under Armour. It was selected for the American Film Institute Top 100 Films of 2012, in addition to being over 140 uh, top 10 end of the year's list. And it was featured at number 67 on D- Dean of Geek com's list of 100 best films of the decade. Uh, see here. Uh, it is also listed as honorable mention on Vulture Magazine's rank- rankings of the best films of 2010. So let's talk a little bit about the um, cast of here. So we have Christian Bale, who plays Bruce Wayne. Gary Oldman plays uh, Commissioner Gordon. Tom Hardy is Bane. Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, is Blake. And Hathaway is Selena. Morgan Freeman is Fox. Michael Caine is Alfred. Um, let's see here. I, uh, we, we also have Bern Gordon as uh, Stryler. So just just a few characters that were in uh, this film. So let's look at the box office. So it was budgeted at about a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty uh, million dollars. Opening weekend here in the U.S., it made one hundred and sixty million eight hundred eighty-seven thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars. It grossed in the U.S. four hundred forty-eight million one hundred thirty-nine thousand and ninety-nine dollars worldwide. Uh, gross it. Did a billion dollars, one billion eighty-one million, one hundred forty-two thousand six hundred twelve dollars to be exact. So that was what um, it really did in the box office uh, there. So let's talk a little bit about the plot of this uh, particular film. So Bane is a mass terrorist and former member of the League of Shadows. He abducts nuclear scientist from a CIA aircraft over uh, uh, Unib- <clears throat> excuse me I can't even speak 
uh, aircraft uh, before crashing the aircraft, eight years after the death of District Attorney Harvey Dent. Batman has disappeared. Organized crime has been erotic in Gotham City thanks to Dent Act giving expanded powers to the police. Commissioner James Gordon has kept the criminal accident after his uh, disfigurement a secret and allowed blame for his crime to fall on Batman. He has prepared a speech to read revealing uh, the fact or revealing the truth, uh, but decides not to read it. Bruce Wayne has become a reclusive and Wayne Enterprise starts losing money after Wayne discontinued uh, his uh, fusion research project where he learned that it could be weaponized. Bane sets up his base in the city sewers and prompts Wayne, uh, corporate rival John uh, Daggett, to buy Wayne's fingerprints. Cat burglar uh, Kyle obtains Wayne's prints from Wayne Manor for Daggett, but she has double crossed at the exchange and alerts the police. Gordon and the police arrive and pursue Bane and uh, Daggett's hatchman in the sewers while Kyle flees. The hatchmen capture Gordon and take him to Bane, and Gordon escapes and is found by rookie uh, police officer John Blake. Blake, a fellow orphan who uh, deduced uh, Wayne's secret identity, confronts him and convinces him to return as Batman. Bane attacks the Gotham uh, stock exchange by using Wayne's fingerprints in a series of transactions that leaves Wayne bankrupt. Batman resurfaces after eight years while uh, interpreting Bane as his subordinates. Wayne's butler, Alfred, is convinced that Wayne is not strong enough to fight Bane and resigns in hopes to save him. Wayne finds comfort in the new Wayne Enterprise CEO, uh, Miranda Tate, and the two become lovers using stolen transactions. Bane expands his operations and kills Daggett. Kyle agrees to take Batman to Bane, but instead leads him to Bane's into Bane's trap. Bane reveals that he he intends to fulfill uh, the mission to destroy Gotham. Batman fights Bane in a brawl, but Bane defeats him, uh, dealing a crippling blow to the back before taking him aboard to an underground prison where escape is virtually impossible. The inmate tells Wayne the story of the raw. Ghoul's child, who was born and raised in the prison before escaping, the only prisoner to have done so. Uh, Bane traps Gotham's police in the sewer and destroys the bridge surrounding the city. He kills the mayor and forces uh, the doctor to convert the Wayne uh, Enterprise fusion reactor core into a decaying nuclear bomb before killing him as well. Bane reads Gordon's speech to the crowd, revealing the truth about Harry Dent excuse me, Harvey Dent, shortly after he releases the prisoners of Blackgate uh, Penitentiary, he inserts martial law in the city and exiles and kills Gotham's elite and kangaroo courts presided over by Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow. Five months later, Wayne escapes from the prison and returns to Gotham. Batman frees the police and they clash with Bane's army in the streets. During the battle, Batman overpowers Payne and Tate intervenes and stabs Batman revealing herself as uh, Tali Al Gal, Rawls' daughter. She activates the bomb uh, detonator, but Gordon blocks her signal. Tally leaves to find the bomb while Bane prepares to kill Batman, but Kyle arrives and kills Bane. Batman and Kyle pursue Tally, hoping to bring the bomb back to the reactor chamber where it can be stabilized. Tally's truck crashes, but she remotely floods and destroys the reactor chamber before dying. While no way to stop the uh, detonator, Batman uses his uh, aerial craft, the bat, to haul the bomb far over the bay where it safely ex- explodes. Before takeoff, Batman subdues, uh, subsequently reveals his ide- identity to Gordon. In the aftermath, Batman is presumed dead and honored as hero. Wayne Manor becomes an orphanage, and Wayne's estate is left to Alfred. Gordon finds the bat signal reprepared, while Lucas Fox discovers that Wayne's fixed the manufacturing autopilot on the bat. While vacationing in Florence, Alfred discovers that Bruce is alive and is in a relationship with Kyle Blake, whose legal first name is revealed as Robin, resigns from the 
Gord, uh, Gotham uh, City Police Department and reveals a parallel from Wayne leading him to the Batcave. Um, here's what I'll say about this movie is that it's got an awesome cast of characters. Obviously, we know that with all the Oscar and Academy Award winners and nominees. Uh, while the the film is a little long, I don't think it's dull at all, uh, which is pretty impressive in itself to be able to carry a movie that long and not have uh, any downtime or, or dull moments in that. So I would say that's in itself uh, not something that everybody can do and is very impressive. Um I would also say that while I'm not a huge fan of superhero movies, uh, this by no means um, hurt my enthusiasm or uh, love to watch this movie. I thought it was well done. Uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with the Christopher Nolan production. Uh, I think he's a great writer, producer, and director. And overall, I would give this on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 being terrible, 10 being outstanding, perfect, if you will. I'm going to give this an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10, and it's something that I think you, you're you just going to want to watch. And not only watch once, but you're going to want to watch it over and over again, because I think it's really that good and really that powerful of a film. Something that you're going to really enjoy. Uh, the writing, the acting... Uh, special effects, everything is just top-notch in this film. So, 8 out of 10, and I would highly recommend that you you watch the film. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Complete Works. You can find more of my work on film at dashbook.com. Just search for Doug Hess or The Complete Works. You can also find me on Twitter at HessDoug14 or on Instagram at HessDoug14. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on the YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment in the comment section. Tune in next time when I review and analyze the next Christopher Nolan film. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you then.